what's happening, everybody? This is The Shift. I am ATO, Ace the Outsider. I am Sarita Amazing. I am Sarita, Sarita Baby. And today on The Shift, we got to change it up a little bit. You know, it's three of us once again. Welcome back to the show. So, um, we're going to have a little panel discussion between the three of us. We also got the audience. Hey, audience, how y'all doing? Nice. So, we got them asking questions. So, what's the topic today? Today, we're going to be talking about relationships, and we're going to be laying out some major keys to a healthy, successful relationship. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. brothers, that word made you nervous. Oh, man, listen, relationships. man, relationships, commitment, you know, caring about other people, those things I don't like to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. I wanted you to laugh. Um, we also got special performances today, though. Um, Who's joining us? My alter ego, Kasai's in the building. With that, um, I like that guy. Sometimes I'm saying, drop some. Didn't him and HD all started collab in the past? They did. Oh, that was tough. That was tough. Cabrera. <laughs> um, <laughs> Also, I'm going to be joined by King T-Top. We got 90 J in the building. And of course, you know, it's all love. We got Neo Groove vibing out with us as well. So um, we got a great show coming ahead. All right. So let's get it, guys. Let's shift up to the first shift. All right, everybody. So let's get to our first topic. So relationships in general, high school relationships. Just, I mean, there's a lot that, that crosses over between them. But we can address some really good points. So um, I, looked, I looked up an interesting stat. Uh, only 2%, no, less than 2% of marriages are with the high school sweetheart. So the person you're probably dating in high school, I mean, hope for the best, but the numbers are kind of against I shoot my shot in the brick. I shoot my shot in the brick. I mean, you might make that shot, but your career ain't going to be that long. Listen, you miss every shot you don't take, you know? So uh, let's talk about some really important things that, uh, that help relationships function well. Um, my biggest thing is communication. I think it blankets pretty much all relationships, whether it's with a significant other or not. Um, and it comes down to just regular conversations, body language is also part of that communication. Um, communicating feelings, communicating how you're treating the other person, communicating how that person is treating you, and just being open about it and being able to build with those conversations and not just um, looking at them from a negative point of view. Go for the positive. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Yeah. I think that another really important thing to do is to be very confident within yourself and also confident in who you believe that your partner is. Mm. You know, you want to make sure that you're leading with confidence, otherwise there's a chance that jealousy is going to creep into your relationship and that can cause for a very toxic relationship. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think with confidence, um, with communication, a term we you know, use is combat compatibility. Um, so I have this thing where I believe lions hang with lions, iron sharpens iron. When you're in a relationship, that's the closest you can be with somebody. So if that person is not on the same wavelength as you or trying to get those same goals and pursuing those same things, it's going to be a major conflict. So you want to make sure that you, when you're in that relationship that you, you know, maintain that level of communication. Um, you know, that, that's extremely important as far as how far that relationship can go. Right, right, right. And then the uh, compatibility also crosses in the trust. Um, trust in <laughs> the trust big, no one. The big Scarface told me that when I was young. <laughs> it didn't work out well for him, though. <laughs> Scar also told me that when I was Lion King. Okay, it didn't work out for him. I mean, I'm just saying, yo, it had to work out. Listen, it's new Lion King now, so like, he's got like descendants, so he must, it must have worked out in some way. He had something. They just ain't tell us about it. We ain't seen it in the I mean, movie. Seen so the must movie. That, that must have been good. Um, <laughs> so yeah, low, no, low. Trust, trust is definitely important. I mean, you know, you have to trust what a person is doing, um, not just trusting that person with your heart, but trusting them to do what's good for themselves as well. So if they're doing something that's damaging, are they going to be able to handle it themselves or are they going to let me in to help them get through it? Um, and then when it comes to like careers and things like that, can I trust them to make the right career decisions? Because that's going to impact us as well. Uh, not saying that they have to make more money or less money than I do, but what's good for them, what's good for us. Yeah, I think that with trust, it's, trust it's also important to expect the best of the relationship. I believe that when you feed negative energy into the world, it comes back around like a boomerang. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to keep up on the positive vibes and to, like you said, trust that the part your partner is going to make the best decision for everyone. Yeah. I think another thing is, um, you know, obviously you're focusing on all the high school relationship, but there's balance in that as well. But the word balance, you know, as you grow, having the balance of being able to, you know, you got two parties, and some days, you know, we talk about 100%, somebody is gonna give 80% to carry that 20, 
Some days it's 50-50, some days it's 40-60. Being able to maintain that balance, and I've, I've had some conversations with some young gentlemen when you talk about roles. So part of being balanced as, as, as a man, as a boy, you grow to be a man, you, know, you have to be able, you need to be able to cook. You know what I'm saying? You can't have that old school mentality of, she should like cook, she's home, home. You know what I'm saying? Hot meal waiting for me. You, you got to be able to just throw some food on the grill with some chicken parm or some I'm not talking about anything I can make personally, of course. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm, you know, some type of low-key master chef. I mean, ramen noodles count, bro. I mean, yes. Yo, listen, I don't, I don't eat ramen. I, so I'm telling you this right now. In a relationship, Shorty say, you know, my girlfriend tells me, she already know. Actually, she knows. I'm, like, I'm not eating that. This is like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know what I mean? I, I work too hard for that. Um, but just maintaining that balance, though, and just understanding, you know, what you can bring to the table as far as creating a healthy situation for both parties. Absolutely. So as you were talking about balance, um, the word support really popped into my head. I was thinking that I think it's really important for partners to support each other. So if your significant other is into music or is into sports, it's really important to show up to their shows and show up to their games and to also be supportive when it comes to family, to go to those family events with each other. Right, 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 right. Yeah, definitely support is, is, is key because when you want somebody in your corner, you know, that, like I said, this, this person that you're with is the, to, is the closest person to you. They know you inside and out, so for them to be there for when you need them the most is definitely key. It's definitely, it's definitely a major key now. And, and, and going off of that, is there anybody in the audience that has any type of questions about relationships or healthy situations? Yeah, audience. Um, is it good to give second chances? Yeah, I think that um, I think that second chances are deserved if a person is showing that they understand what they did wrong, that they apologize, and that they also want to make the changes. If a person isn't going to make the changes, then what's the point of giving them a second chance? You'll probably break up over the same reason. Yeah, yeah. and um, I guess it kind of depends on what they do. So, like, if they push you down the stairs, maybe you're not want to give them a second chance. <laughs> it might be out of window next time. Um, but yeah, yeah, second chances, uh, I think if you try to understand where the person is coming from, kind of play the psychology game a little bit, see why you got those results, see what led up to that, was it something in their past, was it something somebody else did for them, is it something that they're going through emotionally that you can get into, because I'll say it again, you're the closest one to them when you're in, this, when you're in a long-term relationship, mm -hmm. so you know them the best, so kind of figure out what those factors are, seeing if you can patch it up with them, and then going from there, and if they take that uh, the help that you're willing to give, then they're willing to improve and do better next time. Um, I got like a two way answer for that. So me personally, myself, I have to be honest, I've cheated before. So I've given a second chance. So I do believe in a second chance. And you know, I got a quote by Maya Angelou, but it's another quote that comes to mind. Um, it's something like, when you love, give love a, a second chance and another chance and another chance. So that's why I say it depends on the situation based on what you said. You know, if it's something you know, deep and rooted, you know, if you put in, a, invest a lot of time and invest a lot of emotions and you truly have love in the long term, it's come over time. Um, I think it is worth giving it the second chance. But like, like Ann said, you, that person has to be, you know, like they both said, they, they have to be um, under the mindset that they know they have to be selfless and start to make those changes in order to appease that, the other person. Would you say um, compromise is like a big key in a relationship too? Definitely a major key. Um, with compromise comes communication. It's really important to talk to each other and to understand each other. You know, you can't expect someone to compromise with you if they don't even know what your needs are. So you have to be able to communicate your needs. Yeah, and you also have to be comfortable uh, not stepping out of your comfort zone, but comfortable doing something that you wanted to do, but now you can't. Um, perfect example is like if you have uh, a friend of the of the opposite sex who's really close to because I had something like that before, and when my girlfriend came along, she had to take a step back because she didn't want to do that. She didn't want to stop coming over as much. She didn't want to stop like just doing certain things. So I had to distance myself from her in order to let my relationship grow because that's what I want to to flower to grow. That's what I'm putting my energy into is that relationship. So um, definitely compromise is going to be super important. Um, another one is if you go out. You know, you want to hang with the fellas, you want to go out, you want to have some beers, you want to go to the club, and she don't want to go with you, and she can't go with you. Uh, if she says, I don't want you to go, or you can kind of read that, you know, you don't want her to, or she's What if she, but what about when it's like, you know, you can go, go have fun. 
that's that's one of the tricky things. Right. So that's why I'm that's what I was about to say. The point. You have what to read kind of what it is. is the point. No, go ahead. Yeah. You wanna have fun? Go ahead. What's the point? That's when that call gonna be made. That most, night. Most, most of us are gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you, exactly. you said yeah. for me to go. It's just, yeah, like yeah. you said, reading body language, but with compromise too. Um, I think compromise runs line in line with selflessness. You know, being selfless, like you said, coming out of your comfort zone. Sometimes, you know, like high school, there's certain dates and things that you can do with another person or a partner that you want to be with that may come out of your zone. Like, I hate the one, yeah, we're from Buffalo. I hate snow, okay? But if my girlfriend wants to go ice skating, I need to be willing to compromise and be selfless and say, hey, I don't know how to skate. I'm probably going to fall bad. I'm big. People are going to laugh at me. <laughs> keep all that in mind, <laughs> but still make that compromise because this is something that's going to be a joy for her. And the, the reality is sometimes you put yourself in those situations, you find out like, oh, it's not so bad after all. This might be a little off topic, but like, what's the advice that y'all give to someone that's going into a brand new relationship or like a little fling on with someone and they're not all the way comfortable yet, you know? like Somebody that's kind of like shy is what you're saying? Yeah, kind of like, you know, a little cringy, a little shy girl, you know, going into something, like relationship, anything related to that. Like, what's the advice that you give to them to like kind of like loosen up and like be yourself around that person? I think that is extremely important to remember that um, nobody chooses to be shy and that when they are in that moment, if they're there with you, they clearly want to be there with you and to help them loosen up, I think that it'll be helpful if you're a little bit goofy and if you make them laugh. And once you get them laughing, the walls are going to start coming down. Yeah, yeah. And then it's coming out of your comfort zone, too, and kind of just lowering the barriers a little bit. Um, especially if you have something that's done to you in the past that kind of makes you timid and shy. Um, just lowering the walls. Just keeping an open mind and having fun with it. Because, you know, if you don't have fun, it's not going to be fun. Right. So that's, that's the bare bones of it. I um, mean, that question I can speak from personal experience. Uh, one of my best friends told me, carpe diem sees the day. So when I was 16 years old, this girl that I like, I could be having the most passionate conversation about music, sports, whatever, two feet away from her. But the moment I stepped in front of her, choked up. I had no words. We just be looking at each other. So, you know, when somebody told me, my friend told me, carpe diem sees the day, you got to seize that moment. Because just because the specialness that you see in that young lady or that young man, somebody else is going to see as well. And the way this world moves on a constant basis, if you don't take advantage of that moment, Boom, somebody else is going to take advantage of it. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Um, how do you think social media plays a role in relationships today? I know a lot of people have problems with social media and all that. What's a healthy way to balance all that out? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> social media, I think, is one of the biggest burdens that comes with the greatness <clears throat> that it brings. Um, put it like this, right? If you're in a relationship, you got a significant other, you may not feel comfortable with them even looking at an ex or someone they once dealt with or even talked to because... Sometimes it allows social media allows people into your life. So if this person is no longer in your life and they were once romantic with you, why do they need to keep tabs or have some type of idea of what you're going? That's that's personally my philosophy. Like I go by the memes. I send it to my girlfriends. I've done it before to multiple. Like I'm like yo, it's a Ladanian Thompson stiff arm. Like yo, if you rock, if you want to rock with him, then he should know what you're doing. If you rock with me, then don't. But it doesn't matter what anybody else knows. So it. It's, it's very difficult, though, because a lot of people can look at that situation and say, well, that's a bit controlling, that's a bit extra. But the reality is there's a reason why social media is social media. There's a reason why we dictate the profile that we provide to people. So, uh, I mean, I think it's very difficult to, to talk. I don't, I don't really know if there's a, 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 a true answer. I think it depends on the people. And everybody's relationship is a little different sometimes. Uh, like, if you're using social media, uh, obviously other people are watching you. So you have to be careful what you're doing because people are going to have opinions regardless. Um, and so, like, it's their perspective. And sometimes their perspective is going to play a role on how your partner is feeling. So you have to be aware of that and kind of just find ways to just represent yourself in the right way because you have that real person with you. Their family might be watching. Their friends might be watching. So uh, find a way to um, just have them in mind when you're doing something that, that you're doing on social media. Have them in mind and have their feelings in mind. Communicate that. Trust all of this stuff. Yeah, I'm personally a fan of social media. I love it. Um, I love it in my relationship. You know, I like to post, if I was dating someone, I would like to post the person I was dating. And I love to be surprised, you know, to wake up and see a picture of myself on theirs as well. So I think it's important to um, find someone that's compatible with you when it comes to social media because I know there's people out there that's like, they don't want to share their private life. Whereas me, I'm like an open book with my social media. So to find that compatibility and then 
to be understanding and respect boundaries. You know, like he said about looking at exes and stuff. I wouldn't exactly like it, but then that's my job to communicate with my significant other and say, I don't think that you should be doing that. And then hopefully my significant other goes and compromise with me and say, you know what, I won't, you know, I won't interact with my exes or whatever the situation may be. So it kind of ties in all the things we were talking about today. But the reality of it is, though, right, and this is for, for <laughs> fellas and men, right, when your girl tells you block this female, you got to block her. If you tell your girl block this male, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> they, for the most part, most of them be like, why do I need to block? Them? I don't care about. It. But it's like if you want, He's if you want this, nice. it's the same. It's the you, you, you got to keep that constant yeah. balance of everything you said. Balance, compatibility, communication. Yeah. All those things run hand in hand because you got to be on the same page. Somebody has to compromise in order to say, okay, this may bother my significant other in whichever way it does. And if I want this to flourish and blossom, then I must take these steps. You know, sometimes egos need to just go out the window in a situation, and that's what it really comes down to. Welcome back to the ship. We have made it back to one of our favorite parts of the show. Today we have Kasai joined with T Top and Neil Groove performing Trials and Error Interlude. You guys ready to rock the stage? Let's get it, let's get it. Child Ryan had a little bit, let's get it. Shout out to the ship. Shout out to T Top. Shout out to everybody in the building today. We gotta get the energy out, my bad. You feel me? We, you know what I'm saying? I gotta deliver, right? You know what I'm saying? They call it Surrey Mason, right? right. So I gotta amaze people, right? But it's kind of just like, okay, so we call this the trial run. I hope I'm be proud all the sun. I hope my girl know that I'm the one I like. My name was Beaver, all oh, man, that boy. Got the fever, all oh, man, that boy. I like what is police man. Like? That's that hey, K.K. Hey, like him. I can't do me, my friend. And I do the uh, And I do the uh, And I do the uh, Yeah. Okay. It seemed like you was getting hit with dreams. These women call themselves queens. Ain't got no king, ain't got no ring, ain't got no ring. Let the young boy sing. Uh huh, let the old hands speak. Uh huh, let the old soul bleed. Now we do this every week. Every week in the industry, I do the knee sweep. I do the EB, so I apologize for my redundancy. The story going first, show Tennessee. But people never Tennessee pass the followers. That's your degree, that's why I decree. We call it the trial, brought. Make your mama proud of her son. That's a destiny.
was stellar so I'm even more excited about this one right here Nani J featuring T-Top and Neo Groove performing the Rings remix. Turn your volumes up. <laughs> underscore top on Instagram. And you can follow me at 90J underscore official and you should definitely follow the shift. Too. Right. Make sure y'all follow the shift and stay tuned. No, I'm good for the flows, already know how this go Got the middle stick, ain't talking pose Shooting like I'm taking pictures, better pose I run a team, I am the coach I'm super clean, I am the soap Gently down the stream, I am the boat Greatest of all time, I am the GOAT Only one and I'll do is through the trials And up a check and down on the clown Talking out the neck, got no help around Now they don't wanna make a sound Got variety of music got a